What if I told you that some of the most important tech skills of 2030 aren't futuristic at all? I mean, in fact, you can start learning them today, which is pretty wild when you think about it. I mean, it's five years away, but the rate tech is changing, it's pretty quick. We're entering a world where AI can write code, design user workflows, and build MVPs. But knowing how to think with tech, how to reason, design, secure, and build systems that scale is what will set you apart. So today, we're looking ahead to the year 2030. We're going into the future a little bit and breaking down five tech skills that won't just survive the AI revolution, they're going to thrive in it. Starting with the first skill, which is algorithmic thinking. Now listen to this. Algorithmic thinking isn't about writing a bubble sort from memory. It's about understanding how to solve problems like an engineer, even if you're not an engineer. Step by step, efficiently, and at scale. And this is becoming more important than ever for every single role. I mean, imagine building a logistic system for, say, Disaster relief, you're not just coding, you're solving how to deliver food, medicine, shelter, across unpredictable terrain. That means route optimization, dynamic inventory allocations, and real-time response. This applies to all roles that are working on this project when you really think about it. These problems are everywhere. How should we compress video to stream it faster or slow over networks? What's the most efficient way to match passengers with drivers on ride sharing apps in rush hour traffic? How do we prioritize tasks in a real-time OS that controls medical devices? All of this that I just mentioned is algorithms at the key of it or at the heart of it. And as generative AI automates syntax, your real advantage will be in understanding how to model a problem and how to break it down. Here's a really interesting stat. 85% of tech hiring managers say problem solving is more important than something like a specific technical skill. And this is from the Hacker Rank Developer Skills Report. Now let's go through one more example. Even in non-traditional tech roles, like say product management, non-traditional meaning non-technical roles, algorithmic thinking helps you understand trade-offs, performance versus usability, latency over qual versus quality, cost versus speed. All right, coming in at number two is cybersecurity awareness. This is huge. Cybersecurity awareness as we continue with our work and our lives, move on Online, the stakes for protecting that data only grow. And here's the thing, most security breaches don't actually come from sophisticated zero-day exploits. They come from bad oversights, bad passwords, weak permissions, forgotten APIs, really small things or it feels small at the time. Here's an example of this. Uber in 2022 had a breach and it started with MFA fatigue attack, just bombarding an employee with login requests until they hit yes. From there, attackers got to access internal Slack, AWS, and even code repos. Now by 2030, this kind of awareness won't be limited to security engineers. Literally everyone from developers, data scientists, product teams will need to be thinking of security as part of their day to day. I mean, we already need to do that and it's just continuing to intensify. Now here's an interesting stat. Cybercrime is projected to cost the world 10 trillion by the end of this year alone, which is what, 10 trillion, it's wild. In 2023, an AI-generated voice deepfake was actually used to impersonate a CEO and trick a company into wiring $200,000. You might have heard about this. This wasn't a technical failure, it was a social one. So you can see how understanding attack vectors, even non-technical ones, matters more than ever. And if you're using AI tools, prompt injection attacks, model leaking, and different examples like that are all the next gen risks that you'll need to understand to work responsibly. Coming in at number three is data fluency. Let's talk about the skill that quietly powers everything, which is obviously data. But there's a skill within it, from product managing to marketing to user research, knowing how to read, question, and act on data is a game changer. But data fluency, it's not specifically about knowing SQL. Think about it critically. Things such as, is this data biased? What isn't being measured? Is this trend statistically significant or just noise? Here's a really interesting stat for you. 70% of executives say employees lack data literacy, slowing down decision-making and innovation. 
This is from Accenture Future Workforce Study. Let's go through one more example for this. Take Netflix. They don't just track views, they analyze drop-off points, rewatch rates, binge patterns, and even thumbnail effectiveness, which is pretty cool. Their success though really isn't just about the content, it's about understanding how users interact with the content. So if you want to be more data fluent in your current job, Start small even. Use a spreadsheet to track your own metrics. Do things like visualize the data set in a simple chart or ask what is this story of data trying to tell? And in the next five years by 2030 with real-time analytics everywhere, the ability to interpret and challenge data will be as important as knowing how to write a deck today. Okay, coming in at number four is human-centered design. When you think about it today in a world full of tools and features, the ones that win are the ones that people can actually use. Human-centered design means you're thinking like your user. Can the user complete a task easily? Is it accessible? Does it feel intuitive? And by 2030, AI will be able to build interfaces in seconds. I mean, we see that already today. But good UX, for example, it still comes down to human empathy. Now let's look at a subtle example, the skip intro button on Netflix. We've been talking a little bit about Netflix examples throughout this video. It seems small, but it was based on thousands of hours of user data and attention studies. One button added to billions of streams saved viewers a combination of 195 years in the first few months. That's design thinking in action. One small change, massive user impact. Let's go through a stack. Design-led companies see 32% higher revenue and I think it's around 56 higher total returns to shareholders compared to their peers. And this was from McKinsey Design Index. But here's where it gets really powerful. Even if you're not a designer, learning the basics of accessibility, usability, and design systems will make every product you touch, every decision you make so much better. Let's get to number five, which is AI collaboration, the final and arguably most important skill for 2030. Knowing how to work with AI, and I mean, we're seeing it already, of course. Engineers using something like Copilot, designers using Midjourney, researchers using Claude or Gemini to synthesize knowledge. But here's the thing, what separates great AI collaborators from casual users is this. They don't just use AI for shortcuts, they use it to amplify thinking. Imagine chaining multiple AIs together, one for extracting data, one for writing copy, and one for generating visuals, all coordinated through a simple system that you design. And that's all really happening already today. The people who thrive in this ecosystem and will continue to, they understand model limitations, they validate outputs, they know how to build multi-step workflows. Really interesting is 80% of digital workflows will involve AI co-pilots by 2030. This is according to Gardner. Very curious to see how, how accurate that is. You can think of AI not as a tool, but as a collaborator now that needs management. The better you get at directing it, the more valuable it will become. It went from thinking about AI even a year ago as a tool to now something that you manage and it's going to continue to get that way, which is really wild. These are all skills that are very in demand now but over the next five years, they will be heightened, especially as things like AI and quantum computing and the tech advancements that have happened over the past few years have been incredible, phenomenal, really. And who knows where we'll be in five years, but one thing I confidently do know is the skills that we spoke about in this video will be heightened even more so in the next five years. Leave down in the comments what you are curious about, where, you want your skills to grow and be headed into and what you want to see on this channel. We really focus on future tech, evolving, growing your skills so you can stay ahead. So you can watch it, you know, under a 10 minute video and feel like you really took a lot away from it. That can be applied to your job, your daily life, and just make you hopefully a little bit smarter.